Welcome back, creepy kitties, to Dada Hyena's Creature Show. <laughs> and I'm yet another person who does a terrible, terrible impression of Vincent Price. Hello, guys, this is Aiden, and this week's theme is Vincent Price, and the character that my Patreon backers chose for me to draw for him is the abominable Dr. Fibes. So Vincent Price is a huge, huge name in horror. Every He is one of the most beloved horror icons of all time, absolutely, as I've praised him many, many times before, namely in the other drawing video I did of him as um, Egghead. And yes, even a throwaway character like Egghead was made memorable just by the master talent that is Vincent Price. But the thing about Vincent Price, though, is the one thing it seemed like he was missing that other horror stars had was a recurring character who became a household name in the way that people usually think, okay, Bela Lugosi was Dracula, Boris Karloff was the Frankenstein monster, Lon Chaney Jr. was the Wolfman, Bill Cosby was the Predator. Vincent Price didn't quite have a character like that, and even though a lot of his characters, some people will snipe will say, were kind of similar, not too many of them, actually none of them, really had series of their own. The closest he came to having such a recurring character was Dr. Fibes, who appeared in all of two movies. Now, I don't have a hell of a lot to say about uh, Dr. Fibes Returns or Rises Again. I don't remember much about it. So today we're just sticking to the topic of the first original one, The Abominable Dr. Fibes. Now, The Abominable Dr. Fibes is a supervillain movie, and anybody who knows me and knows that I've been doing a supervillain series for over 15 years now would think that it must be my favorite of his. And to that, I sadly have to say... It's not. It's not a bad movie in the least. The Abominable Dr. Fibes, it totally earns its rep, and a lot of people love it for good reason. But when I watch this movie, sadly, all I can do is think of Theater of Blood, which is basically everything that the Abominable Dr. Fibes did good, Theater of Blood did fantastic. Now, both of these films have similar premises. It's Vincent Price playing an eccentric personality who gets revenge on the people who wronged him using clever death traps and ironic punishments and things like that. It's just that the murders in Dr. Fibes are either range from mediocre to downright lousy, whereas the murders in Theater of Blood are very clever, very horrifying, and some of them are just downright hilarious. Now, Dr. Fibes, the murders in them, like I said, they're just okay, and I can't really recall any but the final one that really stood out to me as being, you know, very clever or very well done or really grabbed the imagination. The single most frustrating one I can think of is the one that is based on the Plague of Beasts. As I forgot to mention earlier, the death traps in this movie are based on the biblical plagues of uh, Moses, or I forget at the moment, I haven't been to church in forever. They're based on the Plague of Locusts, Plague of Darkness, Plague of Flies, and stuff like that. The Plague of Beasts is one that is so disappointing because they could have had so many options where he takes his victim, throws him in a lion's den at the zoo, or tramples him with an elephant, or even feeds him to a pack of hungry dogs. What they go with in the movie is not just nonsensical and physically impossible, it is just downright lazy. And there's one thing I really can't tolerate in movies, it's just laziness. And I understand there are times when, you know, budgets hold back this, or things just didn't work out the way they did before. But when you have your hopes up for something really great, and instead the filmmakers just kind of phone in something mediocre or something far below the talents of the people involved, especially with such a fantastic actor like Vincent Price, you really feel disappointed. And that's probably the reason why I'm probably more critical on this film than I really should be. Once again, it's a totally fine movie, and once again, Theater of Blood just did it so much better. Okay, so what, what is good in this movie is that Vincent Price is fine, he's very creepy, and for those of you who aren't so much into humor and horror, then you'd probably gravitate more towards Fives. Theater of Blood has a lot of humor in it, and the humor works fantastic, but if that's not quite your thing and you prefer more of a straight horror movie, then yes, you'll probably gravitate more towards Dr. Fibes. There's not a hell of a lot of humor in this movie except for the murder of Terry Thomas, because it's Terry Thomas, you can't take the bloke seriously. I guess one of the other things that, you know, there are some clever things throughout. Um, the actual design of Fibes without his makeup is not the greatest makeup ever, but the design of it is very cool. Probably the most memorable thing about it, and one that 
that is imaginative but totally out of nowhere is his lair. Dr. Fibes has a clockwork orchestra band that's played by guys in suits imitating robots, but whatever. It looks like a place where you would just like to go and be at home if you were a supervillain. Even little things like that that are memorable and clever, even though the movie as a whole should have been more memorable and clever, I'll take what I can get. And for what it is, the abominable Dr. Fibes is fine. And of course, none of that criticism goes towards Vincent Price, who has more than earned his stardom with us uh, horror fans. So thank you very much, Patreon backers, for voting for this one. Thank you very much for watching. And to everyone else, please join in on Patreon. Join in at any level or at any price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'm done.